Welcome to the start of this week's reading vlog where I have way too many things I want to read and for sure not enough time to read them all, but a girl can dream. So first thing I'll mention is I'm still making my way through White Rage. This is a nonfiction, basically focusing on each point in history when the black community was able to get a leg up of some sort whether that be the Emancipation Proclamation, Civil Rights Acts, Brown versus Board of Education, Obama being elected president, every moment that the black community gets a taste of potentially getting to become equal, there is this white rage, this response, and each chapter is about that response in history. It's, you know, it's a very dense read, it's a very important read, so I'm making my way through that. I'm currently in the chapter about undoing the Civil Rights Act, and I actually know a fair bit about that. It's it's really just about subtle voter suppression and, yeah, about how politicians would use the, what's called the Southern strategy to basically make poor white people feel like their enemy should be poor black people. Because, yeah, they don't want you to look at the rich people. <laughs> So yeah, I'm making my way through that. It's a dense read, but important. I'm also going to finish The Time of Contempt, hopefully today. We will see. I still have like 35% left. I can totally do it. It's just the problem is that this book is a little bit more confusing than some of the other ones because there are a lot of kingdoms, there are a lot of political players, and he doesn't hold your hand at all with these politics which is just hard for me it's hard for me to keep track of a name i've heard once and even remember which side they're on because there's two sides approximately like the nilf guardian side and then like i don't even know what to call the other side the human side but yeah it, it's so that's kind of confusing um there still have some, been some wonderful moments but i just feel like that confusion has really lessened my like enjoyment of this book in particular it's also why i feel like the TV show is going to be really good for this. Like, it, it'll probably be better at explaining these things or giving me at least visual cues or something. That's, like, one thing Sapkowski's not, like, wonderful at. He doesn't, like, give me things to hold on to with a name. Like, I just get a name. Sometimes I'll get some descriptors, but not, like, that many. So if I'm given 20 names in a chapter, it's just really hard. <laughs> just a lot of work. So, yeah, this is probably objectively my least favorite so far which i'm a little worried about because so far each book i read is less good for me than the last but i'm gonna keep powering through i'm still enjoying it enough and i do really think it's going to be a good companion for the tv show which i do adore so just reading it for that alone is probably worth it for me so i've been reading that i'm buddy reading catfishing on catnet with kayla and Rhea. i'll have their channels down below and oh i love this book this is a wonderful book. I think it really solidifies for me that I like young adult that's like sci-fi or contemporary sort of based or, you know, dystopian. I don't like the traditional fantasy YA, I think, as much anymore. But I also don't think I like traditional fantasy as much anymore. And what I mean by traditional is like medieval fantasy kind of stuff. I'm very bad at fantasy subgenres. Like, I read a bunch of fantasy and I just make up my own subgenres. It's, it's not very productive. <laughs> But Catfishing on Catnet has been about this girl who has to keep moving across the country because her mom is scared of their abusive father finding them. And so she only can really form relationships with the friends she makes on Catnet. And one of the friends is an AI. And that's like the premise. And yeah, I'm just really having a good time with it. it it's it's a lot more um, intriguing than I expected. Like I'm very invested. But I need to finish Time of Contempt, so that's my first priority today. And then I'm going to get back into the buddy route. I'm currently caught up, but falling behind like I am with everything. I'm also started, but I don't know how much I'll get to this week, Kurt Vonnegut's um, The Sirens of Titan. I've read the first chapter, and I'm tabbing this bad boy up because I'm going to do a video discussion with the Codex Cantina for it, so look out for that. If you haven't followed their channel, they do some really cool, like, literature analysis so like if you ever wanted to like classical literature but you just didn't have the time it's kind of great to live vicariously through them but I've read Slaughterhouse Five and I liked it and this is my second Vonnegut and my boyfriend gave it to me because he's like this is the most sci-fi of the Vonnegut and I love classic sci-fi and this is really cool 
I mean, only one chapter in, but it's also cool that I've read it close to when I've read Watchmen and um, Exhalation because there's a lot of themes in those um, other works that are also here. So just like making those connections has been really cool. And yeah, I just also, Ronnie gets such a sarcastic writer and I kind of enjoy that. And I'm not done yet because I'm, like I said, this is the week where I'm going to try and read too many things. <laughs> I've also started The Lightning Thief, the first Percy Jackson, and I made mistakes. I should have read this when I was a child. Not because I'm not enjoying it now, but because my literal thing to do as a kid was pretend I was the daughter of some Greek god or goddess. Which, yeah, I've made mistakes in my past. <laughs> but only a few chapters in, but really enjoying this one. And, oh, I'm definitely not done. Oh, I finally got the audiobook for The Last Argument of Kings. This is going well. Um, yeah, I've just been listening to it on my drives to and from work and at work. And yeah, it's just, you know, happening. <laughs> That's what I say about all these books. But really, it's hard to... Uh, it almost feels like a pl whole plot arc of the second book was undone and doesn't matter, which is kind of frustrating. <sighs> but I don't know. There have been some awesome moments. And it's a very, very good audiobook is really what I'll say. I haven't... I was rereading these with the assumption that I would read the standalones because I do hear that each book he, uh, Joe Abercrombie writes they get better but I don't know if they'll get better for me like not that this is bad like it is not bad it's objectively good character work and writing it's just like there is so little magic in this world that I just don't care that much like it's almost like I'm reading like a really 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 historical fiction with some really mean crappy people if that makes sense like there there is magic but it's it's like song of ice and fire level magic which is like barely magic so yeah i mean i do think if you like song of ice and fire this books these books will sing for you they are you know same level of character work and things like that i personally like the characters in this series much more um i think that's it in theory, I'm starting Shat The Shadowed Sun tomorrow because I'm impossible this week. And that's the um, sequel to the N.K. Jemisin duology for the Dreambloods? Pretty sure. So who knows what I will finish, when I will finish it. You will have all the answers within a pretty concise video. I will not. And I will check in as I finish things and have more thoughts. So remember, in the previous clip, I'm like, reading too many things? Shush! The cat's down here. I'm sure he'll end up in my lap at some point. But I have finished two books! Yes! First one I finished, Time of Contempt. Easily my least favorite book in the series. That's really no other way to say it. I had issues with almost all parts of it. Um, I think my biggest gripe was in pacing and execution of the politics and I guess in extension, the world building. So in this book, there's a lot of buildup to a global conflict for this world, politically speaking, and uh, it's very confusing. And I say that as a high fantasy reader who reads a, reads a lot of confusing things on a regular basis, but you would constantly get thrown at names and you wouldn't be provided context so you could connect the names to the side of the conflict that made sense because there's also betrayal and backstabbing and intrigue and that's all great in theory i like that but i didn't like how many names and perspectives were thrown at me without context i mean there was a whole chapter where dandelion is talking to Geralt about what's happening in the outside world while he was um chilling with the dryads and it was all done in other people's perspectives and it was really jarring and really hard and I also was, it was a lot of work to finish the book. The last two chapters were very plotting and I got the sense, oh, there's no real climax in this book. There's no real resolution. Things are just happening. So I'm really excited for the show because I think you can really use this source material super well. But in terms of like a book on its own in a series, not great. Same with like Blood of Elves, although I enjoyed Blood of Elves more because there were more character relationships. We didn't have that same dynamic here. If anything, the one character relationship we went into with Geralt and Yennefer I thought was cheesy and cliche. So 
yeah, I just, I'm not stopping the series, but this is not the strongest work in the series. And I'm just hoping they improve from here. We will see. I am for sure not giving up though, because I'm very, I'm, I'm invested in like, I want to watch videos where the people deep dive and like explain the politics in the world building. That's also what I want from the show. I just felt like in the book, there was not enough, there was not enough helpful context clues. Like if you're going to introduce a bunch of people connected to a like seven different kingdoms on two political sides and each kingdom has two people a king and the sorcerer and you have to keep an eye on who's on whose side who's backstabbing who who are the rebels who are the revolutionaries it's a lot and i just don't think it was handled in a good way so that's my that's my thoughts there but on the opposite side of the spectrum i just finished catfishing on catnet freaking love this book so good Ah, oh, where do I start? First of all, it's about a group chat space where you pay in cat photos to talk to your friends. So obviously awesome. Um, but it's about this chat group and an AI actually runs the chat group, but secretly, like no one knows it's an AI, but that means that the chat group actually doesn't have spam or like major conflicts and people are somehow grouped into clouders, which are, that's the name for a group of cats. How did I not know that? That's so cool. But you get kind of grouped with people who you will mesh well with, like, personality-wise, because the AI is, like, pretty good at figuring that out. And although, like, I still go back and forth of how much I like the idea of, like, social bubbles on the internet, I still thought that for high schoolers, this is great. You get to be yourself in a safe place when maybe in your personal life, in high school, being yourself is hard. I don't actually know who doesn't have an issue being themselves in high school, at least in some aspect, right? Like, some people have it way harder than others, um, but, you know, we all have our crosses to bear, so to have a safe space like that is amazing. And we follow um, the AI and this human girl um, who is constantly moving with her mom because of some familial drama and tension. And that's where the story starts off, and it's so cool, and it becomes so captivating and thrilling. There's these mysteries. It's really fun in that regard. There's like these wonderful friendships that get formed. There's great commentary on sex ed and education. Um, I love the gender inclusivity here. Um, it's it's so, I think, I think it's so well done. You have a character who gets to learn about, not, not like in a large way, but you see someone well-intentioned make a mistake and kind of self-correct and maybe learn because they didn't have a chance to because they live in an area that in their sex ed class doesn't even teach about anything LGBTQA+, like none of that happens. And it's like near futurism, like robots and stuff, so I don't know. I just loved it and I was really excited because I'm getting to the end and I'm like, ooh, like this is a, like the story's wrapped up, but are you saying there's a sequel book? Are you intriguing me? to get ready for a sequel, and there is going to be a sequel. So, I don't know, if you're new here, young adult is not the age group I read the most. Typically read the most adult. I do like young adult books, and typically they're like four, four and a half stars if I pick the right young adult book for me. This is a five star read. I don't know the last time I gave a true young adult book a five star read. I'm not counting A Court of Thrones and Roses, oh, I didn't give that one five stars, but like, I gave A Court of Mist and Fury five stars. But let's be realistic and call that new adult like we should <laughs> or just romance i don't know like it's not young adult but this is so good and i don't hear it talked about on uh, by booktubers who read primarily ya and i just feel like more people should read it <sighs> it's so good so yeah i'm just still happy i finished it today happy i finished two books today i feel so powerful like i could do anything i've been so productive not really but I don't know if this happens to you guys, but I feel more productive when I finish books. <laughs> so now, though, I have to go actually be productive and, like, do dishes and stuff. So, yeah. But now I'm going to read Shadows of Sun, the, no, The Shadowed Sun later, which is my last Jemison, which is kind of sad, but also exciting because I kind of want to be caught up with her um, novels. Still waiting to get her short story collection, and I know there's a novella out there that's probably not in that book. So still have plenty of her stories to read after this, but this will be the last full-length novel. So excited! Plus I'm buddy reading that with 
Katie, Ava, and Justine again, and it's gonna be so cool to like read a whole series with the same group of people. I have not done that since like Harry Potter. But just to touch on that, obviously grew up loving Harry Potter. I don't talk about it much here, haven't reread it since high school, but just know Black Lives Matter, Trans Lives Matter. I am, yeah. <sighs> I am more than willing to help people who want to be educated about things that they maybe are still learning about. Like, if you don't know what being non-binary means, if that's confusing to you, it's okay. I am very willing to show you the resources that I've looked up as a cis woman to help better educate myself. Um, more than willing to do that. So I, I'm willing to help educate and show you resources that I have used, but I'm not willing to... Um, Engage with people who use science incorrectly. And what I mean by that is if you're someone who says gender is binary because of science and chromosomes, I'm, I'm just not going to engage with that. You can type that comment. I will delete that comment. It's, it's not true. Do not use science to validate your transphobia. Okay? I am a PhD in a biology field. I can promise you that the one time that biology is simple will not be with gender identity. It's not happening. And I'm not even going to say that we should be using science to determine gender identity. I'm just saying it definitely disproves that is binary, okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. Like, yeah, that's all. But yeah, I'm going to go continue on with my day. It's been a good day. I had a presentation. It went well, and I will see you guys in the next one. So I'm ending the vlog a bit early because tomorrow I'm driving back home for a dentist appointment and to see my mom, but it's a long drive. So I'm not going to be filming a vlog or editing or anything. You'll still, I mean, you already saw my Monday video. There's still gonna be a Friday video. I just, I'm not gonna be finishing any books today. So I figure I might as well close out here. So since I last checked in, I have primarily read The Shadowed Sun by N.K. Jemisin. That's what I've been putting most of my time into, and I really, really like it. I think I like it better than the first book, and I think it's really helpful that I've gone through all the learning of the world in the first book, although there's still so much fun world building in this one. Uh, and there's like a whole, like, it's got some arcs that we all love. Like, like we keep referring to one of the characters as like Kovu from Lion King 2 which is really fun in the buddy read. And yeah, and it's really early on. Um, there's a character, Hanani, I really, really like. She is a woman in a man's field. She's the only one. And just like growing up, and I mean, I was, gosh, 10 out of the 100 people in my physics major were women. So I can very much identify with that. And it was, uh, it's interesting to read. It's obviously amazing authorial voice. So yeah, and otherwise I haven't really gotten a chance to read that many other things, just packing, Father's Day stuff, just it's been a little busy since the weekend started, but I am hoping when I go home I'll have some more time to read. I want to read a lot of things. I still want to keep going with The Lightning Thief. I want to keep reading White Rage. I um, recently got, today, White Fragility, gotta get to that, and... Is there another one? No, I think, oh, yes there is. I also want to continue reading Signs of Titan. I want to do all those things and, you know, if I accomplish all those things, I will let myself start my reread of The Way of Kings because I really also want to read that. There was just the live stream with the Storm Along 2020 and although I hadn't technically read up to the point, it's like I've read that book three times. So I, I, I know the gist and I just made sure I just didn't talk about any plot points in case I would accidentally spoil something. And that was just really fun to watch, and I just really want to reread it. So, these were the, these were the things from the week. I've got a cat here who's about to be very excited because Ryan will be cat sitting, and he loves Ryan way more than me, if that's even possible. So yeah, that's been my reading week. I definitely didn't read all the things that I set out to read, but I did finish two books, and I'm really enjoying The Shadowed Sun, and. I don't think I'll finish it today, but I think I'll get at least half of it done. So that's pretty good. I'm not upset about it. And yeah, so if you want me to know you're here, 
comment the emoji of a sun because it's really hot today. I think now I can objectively say it's hot. I'm saying this more to R. They always judge me for thinking things aren't, thinking things are hot when they're like 70 because they're from Florida. And I'm like, well, today it's 95. So I think that's hot. I feel like that's warm. Yeah, so it's really warm. And I purposely turned off the fans so this audio quality won't be shit. So I'm gonna end this now so I can go turn on the fans. And yeah, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.